So as part of the work I did on digitising our diesel engine, um, I wanted to add a build monitor to that. So here's the box um, and everything's been undone so you can have a quick nosy inside and how it's all set up. Um, here's the little sensor that normally sits on the front and this little bit of wiring that you can see here is to a sensor um, that, that's going to detect if there's any water. It's just a, a simple switch. I'll just show you what I was going to do. So if I move over to this device here, this is um, a precise measuring device using uh, I2C and you can see the top there there's two I2C sensors on that. And what you have to do um, is you have to combine the values from both of these sensors. And then that tells you how far up this scale you've gone. What's really nice about this is it's accurate, really accurate actually. And it's also completely encapsulated. So this part here can go into any sort of liquid, water, um, sort of nasty type liquids. It really doesn't matter. It's not going to damage that sensor. The problem with this is it's not really suited to that role, really. I, I don't need to know that we've got this much water in. I just need to know that the water has been detected. So there's quite a lot of code to make that work. And it, as I say, it, it's probably just a bit overkill. So I went on eBay and I bought myself a bag of these very small switches. And they are completely encapsulated with glue. I don't know if you can see down there, but there is glue in that. The wiring is actually tinned, so which is pretty good. So they're just very small switches, and basically there's a reed switch in there. And when that activates, it just um, opens or closes the circuit, depending on how you wire it up. So you can flick this round and make this work the other way, um, depending on what you need to achieve. But basically, it just makes a circuit as that comes off. So I've got a couple of them. So I've got a couple of things that I can I can do with them. And basically, I wired one up here, and this is a really simple circuit, which I will show uh, on um, on screen shortly. Um, but basically, it's taking a voltage. Um, it's got a small resistor in the way, and you you either pull that down or bring that voltage up, and and that's then read on one of the pins on the ESP, which you can just see at the bottom there flashing away. So I'll just show you the code in a second, and like I say, I'll show you how it all works. But basically, what you can see the output that you get is that when the sensor is uh, activated, um, after a small while, it changes here to true. Now that can be um, one or zero, so it doesn't have to be true or false. I'm doing a little bit of um, code uh, in, in the um, ESP to actually change that. But you could just have that as zero and one, um, or as I say, you can switch it to um, true or false. Now what would be nice is actually if it said water, um, but I'm not quite at the level where I can program that. So if there's somebody out there that can give us a few pointers as to how we change the code to make that, I'll run through the first steps of what I've done and how I've got the code so far. Um, and then um, if yeah, if someone can give us a bit of advice on how we can make that actually say something like water detected, um, that'd be really nice. Um, but at the moment, it, it's basically a, re a really simple bit of circuitry that you could just keep replicating. Um, and you're just essentially switching something on and off. So this circuitry could be used for lots of different things. It doesn't necessarily have to be used for um, build monitoring, which I'm doing here. OK, so if I actually show you the code, this is really, really simple to do. You're basically just picking up a, a one and zero from a, a digital input pin. Um, so you can see here, this is this is the chunk of code that we're interested in. So just these three lines here. Um, and um, that just gives uh, essentially a title. So it's just a, a placeholder within the code. And then you can see here we've created a new sensor, so we've called it bilge, um, and we're using the digital input state. So we're looking to see if that pin is either high or low, so one or zero. So we've made reference to the actual pin here, which is pin 25. We're using input pull up. So again, as I say, you, you can either have this um, where, depending on, depending on what it's connecting to and whether that switch is like on or off. So if its default position is off, um, it might be that it's input pull up and that's where you're um, taking the, the the voltage and you're pulling the voltage up rather than pulling it down. So there's a couple of different examples I can show on that. Um, but that's essentially what you're doing there. You can either input pull up or you can input pull down. And then we, we're specifying a timer. So we're looking to, to see what the state of this is every five seconds. And the reason I've done five seconds is that I thought there might be some sensor movement like this. So I thought if this is actually rocking in the boat, I don't want to see that all the time. Um, they're, they're quite light, so these things are actually quite light. 
Um, and I thought if that's actually moving up and down as the boat's maybe rocking or something, then, you know, we might get some false reading. So I thought, well, every five seconds would be absolutely fine. And then all you really need to do is connect that output straight to um, a, a reference in Signal K, which is for me is propulsion engine bilge, and just connect that input state straight to that. And what that actually gives you, if we move over to, to this, and this is just a, a simple test setup that I've got running on my old Raspberry Pi uh, B3, which I, I pulled out of the boat um, to upgrade to that Raspberry Pi 4. And as you can see at the top there, we've got engine bilge. If I move the switch, I give it five seconds, and it states its value moves to one. So you can see that is exactly what that's doing. That, that pin has gone high and it's given the value of one. So if I put it back, wait about five seconds, it's gone back to zero. So that could be enough for, for all you need. You know, if you just if you just need to know that something's gone on or off, simply as that, you need that much code. And that will then give you an output in here. If you want to do something a little bit more advanced to that, then you can use some Boolean. OK, so this time, so if we look at the code this time, what we're going to actually change it to now is get a true or false. So you can see there's a couple of extra lines that have been dropped in here. And what we've got now is we're going to turn an integer to a bool. I think that's the right way to pronounce that. Int to bool function. So this is the actual function that's being called. And this is what we're looking for here. So we're looking for an, an integer value from input. Um, and then we're going to convert that. So as you can see here, it says if input equals one, so it has to equal that value, then it's going to return true. Else, so for everything else, it just returns false. Um, and then what we need to do then is we need to call that function. And we do that with this line here. So you can see that the function there is reading this. So then now what we do is we connect the sensor to the function. So it's slightly different. So first of all, it's still build. So it's still the output of, of this here. So we connect that to this function, allow it to go through the function. And then we output that to this. Now, the only thing different here is that I didn't quite understand is it's SK output bool, um, not output float as you would normally have so not only do you have to sort of add a couple of extra lines but you also need to actually change the output type to be bool rather than float otherwise it doesn't work so if you do if you do this but you still have a sk output float in this part of your code here it will still say one and zero regardless you, you have to actually change that and then once that's been sort of uploaded so um if i just so I've got the debugging on here if I put the terminal on. So here you can see the bottom, the value is actually coming directly out of the um, uh, the ESP um, on the on the serial output. So it's just outputting that terminal. Obviously, um, once that code's uploaded, it'll start to say true or false instead of one or zero. And you just need to build that up and, and, and away you go. So here are the two different types of circuits. We've got pull up and pull down. On one side, we've got 3.3 volts on the detecting pin. So this is the pin here. This is just ground and positive. Um, and on this side, the pin is connected to ground through the resistor. Just depending on how you want this to work will depend on whether you use pull up or pull down. And you can change that in the code. You could also change the way the switch operates if that's possible. If that isn't possible, you switch it around in the code and use the opposite one. So these are the two circuits, um, and as I say, this is just really, really simple, really easy to replicate. Lots of different ways to use this, just a simple on-off switch. Um, it could be lights, it could be all sorts of different things that you'd, you'd want to see um, an output from. Um, but that's how you wire the circuit up, um, just using a simple resistor. So you would then pick a pin on your ESP, um, and that's how you would trigger that output. OK, so here you can see a picture of the Fire Beetle. That's the model that I've got, but it's essentially an ESP32. Um, and you can see the switch and the resistor. So we've got the positive here coming down to the top of the resistor, going through the resistor. And then we've got a signal wire essentially coming back here to pin 25. And then on the other side of that, we've got the switch, which is connected to ground. So when we detect water, we close that. And that then grounds this side of the circuit 
and changes the state on pin 25. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this because I've got three uh, areas on my boat that I want to um, measure or detect um, water. So basically we will have um, two or three. I'm not sure it's going to be three. Yet. It might be two. It might be easier to do two because the middle of our boat is actually where is the oil pan. In front of it is where all the um, the uh, auxiliary water pump is and the actual main water pump and all the pipe work. And at the back is where the sail drive is. So they're the two actually that I want to monitor the most. So what we'll do here is we will wire these together. So we will just connect these three together like this um, and we'll do the same on the top. So what we'll do here as well is we will also connect the top together with a, um, a wire and wire all three uh, switches together. So if any one of these triggers um, or detects, then the signal will go through that. It'll ground it out and we'll get the notification that there's water in the bilge. But I, I hope that's been helpful. And if there's anything there that anybody's got any questions about, please do put a, a comment uh, on the bottom. And as I say, if there's anybody out there that can help me actually make it say water detected, um, I'd be really interested to hear um, that as well. Bye for now.